Jesus went all around Galilee preaching the good news and curing their diseases. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus heard that John had been arrested. He withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Galileans, the people who dwell in darkness have seen a great light, and those dwelling in the land of overshadowed by death, life has shone. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon and his called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee mending their nets. He called them and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went all around Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Through the Gospel, may our sins be blotted out in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today is the third Sunday of Ordinary Time. What does that remind us? It reminds us four years ago, on the 30th of September, in the year of our Lord, 2019, Pope Francis, through an apostolic letter, has declared this Sunday the Sunday of the Word of God. In a period illness, he wrote to us that the Word of God is to be celebrated with solemnity and dignity. Number two, we are to study the Word of God with profound love and depth. Number three, we are to proclaim this Word disseminated to ourselves, our family, and friends with clarity and conviction. In the Constitution of the Church, Dei Verbum, the Word of God, priests, deacons, catechists, proclaimers of the Word of God are encouraged to use simple but suitable language in proclaiming the word of God. In Evangelii Gaudium, Pope Francis talks about the joy of the gospel. We are told in John, the gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, that Jesus Christ has come that we may have life and have it in abundance. St. Paul wrote to the Romans in Romans chapter 10, how beautiful are the feats of those who proclaim the good news. And how are they to hear the good news if there are no preachers? John chapter 1, in verse number 14, John tells us, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and nothing came to be without the Word. In verse 16, John will tell us, From his fullness. We have all received, all of us, grace upon grace. Grace in return for grace. So the word of God is the center of our Christian calling. The word of God is the foundation upon which we build our lives. The ancient Roman addict says, Nemo dat quod non habet. You don't give what you don't have. The computer language says, Gigo, garbage in, garbage out. It is what is in your refill tank that comes out when you need to live out the word of God. So we are called to celebrate the word of God, to study it very well, to chew it, to eat it, 
to consume it, to regurgitate it, to digest it, that the word may bear fruits in our lives. And that's our preoccupation, to listen to Jesus, who is the eternal word of the Father. In every mass, we eat of the body and blood of Christ, having been fed on the table of the word. In anticipating the Holy Mass and the Eucharist in John chapter 6, Jesus told them in verse 63, The words I have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. Because the word of God is spirit and is alive, it has a transformative power. It changes us. The book of Hebrews says it's a double-edged sword. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the church wants us to deepen our study of the word of God, to dig deeper into the word of God. Those two guys on their way to Emmaus in Luke chapter 24, verse 45, they were joined by the author of the word of God. Because Jesus Christ is the only author that when you decide to read his work, the word of God, he is by your side. So he began to explain and explain the scriptures to them. And when they reached the home and he broke bread, they said, did our hearts not burn within us as he expounded the scriptures to us? Whenever we listen to the word of God, it should burn our hearts. It should change us. It should transform us if we allow the word to soak in and take root. The sower went out to sow the word. Three kinds of seeds. And the word of God is a seed of the good news. Some seeds fell on rocky ground. They had no soil. Some fell by the way they were eaten by the birds and elements of weather. Some were choked. But there's a word that fell into a rich soil that produced a fruit of 160 and 30. It depends on the heart who are prepared to hear the word of God. On the day of priestly ordination, when a priest received his priestly ordination at the hands of a bishop, or a layman is promoted to the diaconal state, he is handed the book of the Gospels. And they said, accept the word of God, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read. Preach what you believe. And practice what you preach. And that's the center of my message to you on the Sunday, the word of God. Believe what you read. Preach and proclaim what you believe. But to believe and to preach is nothing. Do you practice what you preach? That's where the word of God convicts all of us, pew and pulpit, people and priest. We are called by Pope Francis. As the church in his constitution, in the Vatican II document, Dei Verbum, insists that we become the living word in our society. St. Paul, in writing to the Corinthians in the second reading, talks about divisions in the church. The, e the immaturity of the Corinthian church. I belong to Paulus, I belong to Paul, I belong to Cephas, I belong to Peter. Immaturity. We were baptized into Christ. We should belong to Christ. When we allow divisions to live among us, it is the devil that is working to separate people. But the word of God unites people. Isaiah in the first reading preaches hope. And hope comes from the word of God. And hope is the last thing that dies in anybody. When you allow hope to die, you are just a few meters to suicide. Because you think you are the be all and the end all, you are the center of your life. No. You need a relationship outside you with the word of God. And hope means the assurance of things hoped for. The expectations of things not seen. Hope means it will get better. No matter how bad things are, it's going to get better. As we are scared of the blizzard that is going to come, there's going to be summer. 
So we keep our hope of a good summer. Hope is what the word of God gives to us. Naphtali and Zebulun. They were the two cities of Israel to be conquered. And so they were a name of shame. They were people desolate, frustrated, oppressed. They were people in confusion and distress. But Isaiah told them today, hope on the word of God, light will come to Naphtali and Zebulun. And so the gospel came as a connection to complete that prophecy of the oracle of Isaiah. Jesus began his ministry as John proclaims him the light of the world in John chapter 8 and chapter 9. He began preaching around Galilee, around Zebulun and Naphtali, bringing that light and hope to the people. Remember the beautiful song we sang at Advent. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates, let him come in. Open the gates, let him come in. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promise of ages. And then, where I like so much in this song is this. The verse that says, In all of Galilee, in city or village, what does Jesus do? He goes among his people, curing their illness. Emmanuel lives among us, curing their illnesses. And the greatest sickness is sin. The worst cancer is sin because the danger of cancer, it eats up its own host. That's why cancer is so bad. It destroys the body of the host. Sin does this to us. So Jesus invites these guys today to help him proclaim the word of God. The Lord is calling you today, he's calling me to proclaim. I have received vocation as a priest to preach. You can be a catechist, you can be a lector, you can be a preacher, wherever you are. In the corporation, in the classroom, on the road, in the store, to be like Simon and Andrew. They left their business to focus on the word of God. And then the Zebedee brothers, those two guys are crazy. They left their father, James and John. They abandoned Zebedee, the old man in the boat with the fish and everything. When Christ calls you and I to follow him, the game is called surrender. Take care of my business. I will take care of you. I believe. Father, I believe.
sisters, in all of Galilee, in city or village, in South Bend or Fort Wayne, he goes among his people curing their illnesses. Let us go to the Lord and pray. For the church that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, to the truth of the Gospels. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For all nations throughout the world, that they may strive to work together and never be motivated by greed or self-interest, but rather work for all that is true, good, and beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the Wagnerowski family, the intention of this Mass. We pray to the Lord, Lord that we may seek the Holy Spirit to guide us to do the will of God in our lives. We pray to the Lord, Lord that we may recognize the gifts that the Lord has bestowed upon us and put them at the service of his gospel. We pray to the Lord, that God and through the intercessions of our Blessed Mother supernaturally intervene and heal our nation and our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That all of us may respond to to the grace that God gives us and strive to do his will in things both great and small. We pray to the Lord. Lord, that all corruption in our world be uncovered, both in the church and outside her ranks, that those responsible for it lose their power or be converted, so that we can have leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with the natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, May the Virgin Mary will encourage us and accompany us as we study God's word. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord our God, listen to our prayers, for you are the answer to our worries and our needs. Restore us again as you did at Naphtali and Zebulun, and change the Galilee of our lives into the message of your goodness. You are the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 